here with Dr. Mahal, cardiologist from Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital of Somerset, and Daphne Oz, chef, best-selling cookbook author, and Emmy Award-winning TV host. So welcome. Thank you both for being here. Thank we'll you. start with Dr. Mahal. Could you tell us some of the lifestyle changes that we should make to promote a healthy lifestyle? Certainly. Well, there are many different things that we can focus on. I think the first I would sort of say is diet and exercise, you know, be healthy. And that's a combination of eating well, eating healthy foods, and also having a good amount of exercise on a daily basis. There are many ways that you can exercise. It really depends on what your physical ability is. If you are able to do strenuous exercise, that's the best. They say at least 75 minutes every week or more. If you're gonna do moderate exercise, you could walk. The recommendation is 10,000 steps every day. And that's a great way to promote health. The other is know your risk factors. If you have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, get a checkup. See if you have genetics that increase the risk of heart disease. So there are many ways that you can do it on a personal level and on a medical way. Okay, wonderful. And Daphne, could you tell us some of the tips to promote a heart healthy diet? Of course, yes. So I, I think I agree with all the lifestyle modifications that are so critical to keeping the body as a whole happy and healthy. And I, I think that the treatment really starts at home. We have that power every time we put something in our mouth to turn on the right genes to keep disease at bay. Um, for me, the sort of heart healthy foods that I focus on have a lot of fiber in them. I think that's something that Americans are dramatically low in um, and makes a big difference to keeping you full, keeping your body weight at a good level, but also for heart health overall. I like some healthy fat, I like a lean protein, and I like hydration. Hydration is the one that kind of always throws people for a loop, but and correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. Mahal, but the way that the body signals and understands thirst is very similar to the way that understands hunger. A lot of times we eat, we actually are thirsty. So making sure that your foods include a lot of hydration is actually um, a great way, again, to make sure that you're not overeating, that you're eating enough to feel totally um, exhilarated and fed and satisfied, but also uh, really taking care of your body at the same time. And again, I'm a big fan of making health a priority, not an obsession. I think that healthy lifestyle should always make room for a small dose of indulgence, that's good. <laughs> taking it count. Um, and, I, and I believe that what you do most of the time is what counts. So if you crowd out the bad options at home, really cook as much as you can for yourself. Where you, that's how you'll limit the excess sodium, the excess added and, and processed sugars and fats. Um, then when you go out to dinner with your husband or you're out for, with friends and you wanna have a great drink or you wanna have a nice dessert, you don't need to go crazy about it. That's wonderful. I have one last question. Yes. And I'll ask you, and if you have anything to add, feel free to chime in. Um, how do you balance prepare, living a healthy lifestyle, preparing healthy meals, all that you have to do, and work and parenting? How do you balance it all? So I think there are two important answers to that question. The first is that I let cooking relax me. For me, the kitchen is my kingdom. It's where I go. Think about it. As adults, how few places are there where we can go and make a mess and have the consequences be Worst case scenario, you order pizza, you know what I mean? You get to go and experiment and travel and relax and have fun and um, and explore. I think that's really critical. I take it very easy on myself. I am not about precious food. I want it to be delicious and to feel celebratory, even my everyday food, but um, it should be easy. I think keeping it easy keeps it fun. And the second thing I do is I make um, I make every meal count. So I, first of all, crowd out the bad options. So my pantry and my refrigerator are stocked with things that make healthy cooking the obvious choice. I don't have to fight with my refrigerator to make the meal that I want my family to eat. Um, and when I put something in the oven or something on to cook that's going to take a long time, maybe 45 minutes up to a couple hours of doing something like a, a roast or a braise, I cook two times the amount. So then I get two meals worth of food for one time of the effort. Oh, that's great. And I bring my kids in the kitchen a lot. Yes. We have fun. So there. you can play together. Yes. 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 I completely great. agree. You know, Daphne, she's made a good point. I think it's balance, it's education, and it's being prepared. And I think that's part of life. Whatever you're going to do, you're going to do, you know, go on vacation, go to work. It's always being knowledgeable, being prepared, and finding that balance because you need to have a healthy mind and a healthy body. And it's only then that your heart will be healthy. So it's really those three steps that I would suggest people should focus on as well. 
That's wonderful. Thank you, both of you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.